Hi everyone, my name is Veva, I'm 24 years old and I'm originally from Italy and right now I'm doing a PhD in the Department of Theoretical Physics at the University of Geneva. So Sveva, you're doing a PhD, what does that mean? It means that I'm learning to become a researcher. I am an apprentice, so quite the same way as an artist or a young carpenter learn the tricks of their profession from an experienced mentor. I am doing the same, just in a more abstract way, working under the close supervision of an experienced researcher, Professor Camille Bonvang. And what tricks and secrets are you learning exactly? Well, research doesn't follow a predefined path, so in the sense it is really a form of art. What I'm learning about is to formulate research questions and try to address them, which means that I have to think about a possible method to follow, to obtain some results, to analyze the results, and throughout this process I always have to question my hypothesis. I'm learning to do all of this on the field, which means that I'm working under Camille's supervision, trying to answer these research questions, and writing a thesis. My PhD will last for four years, at the end of which I will defend my thesis and I will have to show that I've become competent enough to be able to discuss my results in front of a committee of professors. And if I do that well enough, I will earn a doctoral degree and finally become a doctor. And what is this specialist field of yours? So my specialized field of my PhD is theoretical physics and cosmology in particular, which means the study of the universe on large scales. So typical questions that we ask in cosmology is how old is the universe, what does it contain, or how did it evolve since the Big Bang? So this is quite fascinating, isn't it? So at the end of your PhD, you will be able to answer all these questions? Well, I wish I could, but of course not. So the objective of research is to push the boundaries of human knowledge forward, which is quite of a daunting task and actually requires a very, very deep understanding of the subject that one is studying. This means that often PhDs focus on very specialized topics, even though, of course, it's always good to keep a general perspective. So in my case, my specific research questions deals with the distribution of galaxies in the sky. So what we are asking ourselves is, what can we learn about the laws of gravity by looking at these galaxies? And if you want to learn more about this, we have several very nice scientific videos on this YouTube channel, which I encourage you to watch. Wow, that sounds interesting. Have you always been interested in physics and cosmology? Well, actually not. So when I was a teenager, I was convinced that I would become a language teacher or a journalist. So I actually chose a high school program that was really focusing on philosophy and literature. I studied a lot of Latin and ancient Greek and I did not have too much math and physics. But then one day I had a particular insight about myself. So one of my interests was at the time and still is to actually write poems. And one summer when I was around 16 years old, I decided that I would put all my poems in a collection. And in doing this, I reread many of them and I realized something, which was that something that was constantly mentioned in these poems were the universe, the stars, galaxies and the sky. And I know that this may sound like a huge mental leap, but in my 16 year old head, I told myself, wow, this is so interesting. It would be really nice to be able to gain a deeper scientific understanding of these celestial objects. So what did you do next? So I started reading about physics in my spare time from some uh, popular science books. I signed up for an astronomy camp. I followed extra physics classes um, organized by my high school teacher in my spare time. And I realized that physics could really become my profession. So I decided to enroll in the bachelor program in physics at the University of Turin in Italy. And I was so excited, I was really thinking, wow, I'm going to learn so much. But then, yeah, the beginning was really tough. And this was because I was lacking some basic notions in math. And my first courses were calculus and linear algebra, which are really hardcore math. And they were a bit far from the very, in a sense, romanticized idea of the universe and physics that I had at the time. But you're still here doing physics. Yes, exactly. After a while, at some point, I realized that 
I have to change my perspective. I realized that doing physics in some way is like climbing a mountain. It takes a lot of effort and one really needs to start from the very basics and learn a lot of math. But after a while, you can really understand more and more. And step by step, you can enjoy the hike up. And once you reach the top, the view is definitely worth the effort. I mean, when I first started to understand about general relativity and quantum mechanics, it was such a satisfaction. And how did you end up choosing cosmology in particular? Well, when I started university, I didn't even know that cosmology existed as a field of research. But then, during the third year of my bachelor's studies, I went as an Erasmus student on exchange to the Uppsala University in Sweden. And there I did my bachelor thesis in cosmology. This was my first encounter with this subject on a scientific level, let's say, and I immediately fell in love with it. So basically, ever since, I never stopped doing research in this field. First as a master's student in theoretical physics in Uppsala, and now as a PhD student at the University in Geneva. I am very fascinated by questions that concern the universe as a whole, and I try to address these questions both with mathematical rigor, but also with a grain of creativity that arises from my passion for art and poetry. This sounds amazing, but I'm not sure I fully understand what you do in practice right now on an everyday basis. So what I do in my everyday life gradually changed during the course of my PhD. At the beginning I had to read a lot of scientific literature, meaning articles and studies done by others, in order to become familiar with the specific topic of my PhD. And then this literature study became the starting point to formulate some research questions that I try to address by thinking about them simply, by discussing together with my supervisor and with my colleagues, by doing calculations both with pen and paper and with a computer. And then once I find some answer, I write it down in the form of a, of a scientific article, which I then submit to a scientific journal for publication. In other fields of science, it is very common to work in a laboratory. However, my project is purely theoretical, so I don't do that but I still need to always keep in mind a connection with observations. So in the case of cosmology, as a specific example, I always need to think about uh, what are the specifications for future missions, for example, in what way they will observe galaxies. So there is always a contact with uh, data. So you mostly sit at your desk doing all these tasks? Yes, I do spend quite some time sitting at my desk, but this is far from the only component of my job. So discussing with peers is an extremely important component of research. So I spend a lot of time discussing with my colleagues. Sometimes we literally stare at the same blackboard or at the same computer screen together thinking about some answers. And then we also take breaks together. Our cosmology group here in Geneva is a very social environment, so we have lunch together every day and we also discuss about things that are not necessarily cosmology, which is very nice. Then every week I attend seminars and group meetings, which are very interesting occasions to learn about also other fields of cosmology that are not maybe directly related to my specific topic of my PhD. And then I'm very lucky because a very fun and enriching part of my job is to travel around go to conferences and PhD schools around the world to present my research there and to meet other scientists that come from other universities. And on top of all of this, I am also teaching. I'm a teaching assistant, which means that every week I meet with undergraduate students to help them solve exercises from their university courses or answer their questions. And this is also a part of my PhD contract. Do you like teaching? Yes, I like it very much and I find it extremely important. I always try to form a connection with my students, trying to inspire them and transmit my passion for physics and cosmology. And I think that the same applies actually to scientific outreach. This is something that I believe the scientific community could do better. I think that as researchers and as scientists, we have a responsibility to make our results accessible to everyone. And this becomes even more evident if we think that we are mostly paid by taxpayers. For example, my PhD is paid by a grant from the European Union. 
Our results are publicly available online in the form of scientific articles. However, the language of these articles is extremely technical. So I think that we should all make a better effort to communicate these results to a general audience and to make even more students interested in science and cosmology in particular. This is why, for example, we set up this YouTube channel. So between research, teaching and outreach, life as a PhD student sounds very busy. What have you learned so far and what comes next? So I've recently completed my first year of my PhD and I still have three to go. I would say that so far I really learned a lot, both on a professional and on a personal level. First of all, of course, I became way more aware of what are the current open questions in cosmology and I learned a lot about the methods that could be used in order to address them. In the rest of my PhD, I would like to gain an even deeper knowledge about this and I would like to be able not only to answer research questions but also to formulate them on my own. And then, in parallel to contributing to science, as I was mentioning before, I would really like to make an even greater effort in order to communicate it to a general public. And then, on a more general level, I would say that my studies in physics and my PhD in cosmology have taught me that science is not only a mere intellectual exercise, but it's also an exercise of patience, humility and collaboration. And wherever my future career will bring me, I am determined to keep these values with me and I really hope that I will be able to give my own small contribution to the understanding of the universe.